Things look good now in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, but when Dave Clawson first arrived at Wake Forest, it wasn't necessarily that. As a matter of fact, his first three seasons from 2013 to 2015, a combined 10 wins. Yeah, not very good. But 2016, they began to break through. A winning record and a bowl appearance, and last year going to eight wins and just five losses. So Wake Forest, yeah, this is a school that is really on its way up. At least that's the way the trend is looking for Dave Clawson's crew. And they return a lot of offensive experience. One of the best offenses last year in the ACC has an opportunity to do just that once again in ring 2018. And big reason is the offensive line. Offensive line, by the way, returns every starter. As a matter of fact, not only are these guys seniors, but a lot of them are fifth-year seniors. So they know what it's like to play in the trenches and be a part of a lot of football. And Ryan Anderson, he returns as the team center. First team All-ACC last year. Offensive tackle returns. Third team All-ACC in Justin Heron. And Phil Haynes is back. Third team All-ACC at the guard spot. If Wake Forest struggles on offense this upcoming season, I don't think you can blame it on these guys because they definitely have the experience. And remember, the Demon Deacons were the number two, number two offense last year in the Atlantic Coast Conference in scoring and in total yardage. So they have a lot going for them. But what about the skilled players for the Demon Deacons? Well, for the most part, they should be taken care of in 2018, especially with Matt Colburn carrying the ball. The running back had over 900 yards rushing in 2017 and had seven scores. And backing them up are Keen Berg and Kate Carney, both with playing experience. Receivers, they should be pretty good in this area as well. Lots of experience, including the number one guy in Greg Dortch, even though he only stands five feet nine inches tall. He's a big time speedster, will also be returning kicks and punts. Last season, uh, caught 53 passes had over 700 yards in receiving and had nine touchdowns and some experience along the way as far as the receiving court. Talking about Alex Bachman with three scores and Scotty Washington back as well. But the big mystery for the Demon Deacons is going to be the quarterback because you no longer have John Wolford who threw for over three grand last year. So Kendall Hinton, who's known for his speed more than anything else, he will be the signal caller for this team. We will see him in week number four. I'll explain that in a second. By the way, Hinton uh, saw playing experience last year and has seen playing experience as far back as the 2016 season. So he knows what it's like. But here's the bad news for Wake Forest. Kendall Hinton will not be able to play for the first three games, suspended for violation of team rules. So you'll have uh, Sam Hartman. Sam Hartman, who was an early enrollee but uh, has Never played collegiate football before. He'll have to be the guy to ride the Demon Deacons up until that Notre Dame game when Hinton can come back. Now talking about the defense, and this, boy, I tell you, this was absolutely bad to watch last year. Uh, they were the worst team in the ACC in total defense. 457 yards per game is what the Demon Deacons allowed. And to make matters worse as far as that secondary, you lose your best player. You lose uh, Jamie Bates. The safety. So we'll see if Hassan Bassey can be the new leader of this team. Um, he'll play at the corner position, had three interceptions, and also had 75 tackles. Your leading returning tackler plays a strong safety spot. That's uh, Cameron Glenn, a senior, had almost 100 tackles last year, had 98. And another corner, Amari Henderson, had 62 tackles and a couple of interceptions. Wake Forest will primarily line up in the 4 2 5 alignment. That means that one linebacker is going to be Justin Stranod, had three interceptions a year ago and had 51 tackles, pretty good player. And Demetrius Kemp, uh, the senior at the other linebacker spot, had 63 stops. Defensive line, yeah, they lost a pretty good one in Duke. Oh, shit. Okay, that's fine. And let's chit-chat about the Demon Deacons defensive line, where now Duke edgy four, well, living on the edge, living in the NFL. No longer with the Demon Deacons. So Carlos Basham assumes a big responsibility of taking over that position at defensive end. Last year as a freshman, got 24 tackles. The anchors on this team are going to be inside. That's right, the defensive tackles where they've got the most experience with William Yarbury as well as Zeke Rodney. So Rodney and Yarbury back for one more year. And special teams, well, the kicker, he was all ACC, a damn good kicker in Mike Weaver. So it looks like Dom Maggio who's the team's punter, will be assuming double duty, both punting and place kicking. 
Highlighting the schedule for Wake Forest, the first two games they should win without breaking much of a sweat. But then the schedule picks up game number three, that's Boston College. That's also the ACC opener. Then game four, the return of Kendall Hinton as Notre Dame comes into Winston-Salem. You look at the October schedule, it begins with a bang, opening up against three-time defending ACC champion Clemson. But you do get two weeks to prepare for Florida State. The following week, can't overlook Louisville. And a couple of tough road games in the month of November, North Carolina State and Duke to wrap it up. Once again, I look for the Deep and Deacon offense to put up a lot of points, but I think the defense will continue to suffer. I've got Wake Forest in the middle of the Atlantic Division finishing fourth. That's my look at Wake Forest. We'll see you next time.